Hello and welcome to this Learn English Elementary recording brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Hello again and welcome to Learn English Elementary podcast number six. I'm Tess from London and he's Ravi from Manchester. Hello. And I have to say to the listeners, Ravi has just arrived. <sighs> What happened, Ravi? Oversleep? Oh, I've had a nightmare journey. The underground was closed for some reason, so I had to get a bus and of course the bus was absolutely packed because the underground was closed and the traffic was awful. Oh. What a nightmare! Still, I got here just in time. <laughs> Uh, what about you? Was your journey okay? Well, I came in the car this morning. Mm. It was busy, but not too bad, you know. Ah, well, you see, I was nearly late, but you know, I use public transport because I care about the planet and the environment. But if you want to take your car... And you use public transport because you haven't got a driving licence. <clears throat> You won't want a lift home then in my terrible car, will you? Oh, very kind, thanks. That'll be lovely. <laughs> hey, I know what I wanted to ask you. Your cat, has it got a name yet? <gasps> yes, yes he has. He's called Oscar. Oscar? Hmm, I quite like that. Why Oscar? I don't know, to be honest. He just looks like an Oscar. Oh, he's so cute, Ravi. Hmm. I still think you should have called him Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today, Gordon? Fine, thanks, Ravi. Gordon's our producer and king of the terrible jokes. Mm. We'll hear from him again later. But now, on with the show. Tess, what have we got? We've got all sorts. We've got the quiz, we've got Kazakhstan, we've got Carolina's new flatmates, and we've got I'd Like to Meet. Do you want to tell us about it? OK. In this part of the podcast, we ask people a simple question. Which famous person, dead or alive, would you like to meet? And we ask them to explain why. So let's say hello to this week's guest, Vanessa from Cambridge. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Hello. It's great to meet you both. It's nice to meet you too. And what do you do, Vanessa? Um, I'm a student. I study law. Law? So you're going to be a lawyer? That's a good job to have. Well, yes, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Were you born in Cambridge or do you study there? Um, both, actually. Um, I've lived there all my life and now I study there too. So you live at home with your parents, right? Oh, no. Um, I live in university accommodation. Oh. I think it's better. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably have a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it's good. <laughs> now it's time to answer the question. So, Vanessa, which famous person, dead or alive, would you like to meet? Frida Kahlo, the painter. OK. I've heard the name. Uh, there was a film, wasn't there? But I don't know anything about her. Yeah. Um, it was a good film uh, with, uh, with Selma Hayek. She was Frida. Yeah, great film. Loved it. Um, Frida Kahlo was Mexican. She was born at the beginning of the century and she died in the 1950s. When she was 19, she was in a horrible bus accident. She had terrible injuries. Well, I won't describe them all, but she had to have a lot of operations. And she was in bed for a long time. <sighs> she liked painting, so her mother bought a mirror and put it over her bed. So she started painting pictures of herself, self-portraits. And she never stopped painting after that. The pictures are a bit strange, though, aren't they? I'm not sure I'd like one in my living room. Well, yes and no. Some people think that she was a surrealist, like Salvador Dali, that she painted dreams. But that isn't true. She painted her life, all the things that happened to her. And her life was a bit strange, or, let's say, unusual. So the pictures are unusual, too. Mm. They're her life. Her paintings tell her story. Because of the accident, she couldn't have children. 
and you see that in her pictures too. Mm. Oh, I love her. Madonna collects her paintings. She once said that she couldn't be friends with anyone who doesn't like Frida Kahlo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's incredibly famous now. One of her paintings, uh, Roots, I think it was, was sold in 2006 for five and a half million dollars. <laughs> five and a half million dollars? I wouldn't mind that in my living room. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, yes, I, I think Frida would be very surprised too. That's what I'd like to tell her if I could meet her. How famous she is now. And how much people, especially women, love her work. She'd probably like to see the film too. <laughs> yes, that's true. It would be really interesting to hear what she thinks of it. Mm. I think I'm going to look at some of her pictures on the internet. You've got me interested now. <laughs> and try and see the film if you get the chance. It's called Frida. I will. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that, Vanessa, and good luck with your law course. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Yes, thanks, Vanessa. That was great. And don't forget that we'd like to hear from you. Why not write and tell us about who you'd like to meet? You can send your own, or you can look at what other people have sent in by checking out our website. So, as usual, it's quiz time next. <music> Tess? What have we got? We're going to play Beginning With again. And I hope we've got our two players ready on the telephone. Hello, Will. Hi, Tess. And Jody. Hello. Let's start with you, Jody. Where are you calling from? From Cardiff. In Wales. Do you like it? Yeah, it's great. It's a capital city, you know, so there's quite a lot to do. And what do you do, Jodie? I'm still at school. I'm 16, so I'm doing my GCSE exams this year. OK. Well, good luck with them and good luck with the game today. Now, Will, where are you? In Peterborough. Uh, OK. I know where that is. And what's it like? Um, it's a bit boring, really. Like, there isn't really anything to do for people my age. Oh, dear. I'm sure it's not that bad. How old are you? I'm 16 as well. I'm at school like Jodie. OK. Well, good luck to you too, Will. I know you both know what to do, but I'll quickly remind you. I'll ask the questions and to answer, you press any button on your phone and we'll hear a buzzer. Let's hear your buzzers. Will? OK. Jodie? OK. The questions tell you what letter the answer starts with. So I might say a form of transport beginning with T. And you can say train or tram or another transport that begins with T. OK. Ready? Yeah. Then let's go. Remember, it's first one to three. Fingers on buzzers. Can you name a fruit beginning with P? Jody. Pear. Yes. One nil to Jody. A colour beginning with P. Will. Purple. Yes. One one. An animal. Beginning with W. Will again. Wolf. Right. 2-1 to Will. A country beginning with A. Will. Africa. N no, sorry. No, a country, not a continent. Jody. Uh, Argentina. Yes, 2-2. Two, two. So, the next one is the decider. Ready? A sport beginning with B. Jody. Badminton. Yes, well done, Jody. And bad luck, Will. Jody wins this week's Learn English book token to buy any book you want. 
What kind of book are you going to buy, Jodie? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think. Probably like a novel or something. Okay. Well, enjoy it, whatever it is. The book token will be in the post on its way to you today. Thank you both for playing, and remember, if you're listening, we'd like to hear your ideas for games we can play. Send them to us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. You know we'd love to hear them. Right, it's time for our person in. I'm looking forward to this. In this part of the podcast, we hear from different people around the world, and this time, Rebecca Dalton is our woman in Kazakhstan. <laughs> On a cold winter's morning, with thick snow on the ground around us, I watch the magnificent golden eagle fly high into the sky above us, before returning to the arm of the bakuchi and sit on his thick leather glove. I had travelled for over six hours on difficult roads to meet this man. The name bakuchi means the Eagle King. The journey gave me an idea of just how big. And how empty Kazakhstan is! It is the ninth biggest country in the world, bigger than all of Western Europe. Yet it has a population of only fifteen million, so most of the country is almost empty. And this empty countryside has everything: a major mountain range on the border with China, great lakes and rivers, deserts and plains. Most importantly for Kazakhstan. It also has oil, perhaps twenty percent of the world's supply, and many valuable metals can be found here. Over ten years ago, Kazakhstan moved its capital city. The new capital, Astana, is full of new buildings designed by famous international architects. A thoroughly modern city. Yet it is out here on the empty plains, watching the golden eagle fly, that you get a true feeling. Of this little-known country, the oil and valuable metals will bring changes to Kazakhstan in the years to come. But you feel and hope that the Bakuchi will continue to fly his eagles in this wonderful, lonely space. <laughs> Isn't it? Kazakhstan is absolutely huge, but most of us don't know anything at all about it. Yeah, it sounds fantastic, though, doesn't it? You say that about everywhere—New Zealand, South Africa. <laughs> It's true, I know. <laughs> I'd love to travel around the world one day and see all of these places. Oh, by public transport? <laughs> okay, but I really do want to travel. But the next best thing, listeners, is hearing about your countries. So do remember that you can send your text to us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil dot org. Tell us something interesting about your city or your country. That would be great. Now it's time for your turn. Your turn is when we go out in the street to find out what people think. This time the question was, "How green are you?" Nice one. How green are you? What do you do to help save the planet? Like I use public transport. <laughs> okay, let's hear what people said. Hmm, what do I do to help save the planet? Not enough. I hate to say it, but it's true. I mean, I always try to remember not to use plastic bags or recycle or whatever, but I always forget. I mean, I really have to try to do more. Well, we recycle pretty much everything we can, you know, bottles, cans, newspapers, and all that. But to be honest, we don't do much else. I do as much as I can. You have to, you know. We all have to. I、uh, don't take short haul flights anymore. I used to fly down to London quite a lot, and and of course I recycle and everything else I can. I know I'm not going to make myself popular saying this, but I don't really do very much. Look, 
there are factories all over the world putting out loads and loads of pollution every single day. And I don't see how saving your old newspapers is going to help. Apart from making people feel good about themselves. I'll tell you the greenest thing I do. I grow almost all my own vegetables. I've really started thinking about where my food comes from and the food miles and that, you know, like I won't buy food that's been flown here from Australia or something. Hmm. They make me feel a bit guilty. Some people do so much. I feel like the first woman who said she didn't do enough. I don't think I do enough. I do recycle things, though. Me too. It's difficult, though, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, remember, listeners, that we'd love to know what you think. How green are you? What do you do to help save the planet? You can write and tell us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. Right. Now it's time to join Carolina again in Newcastle. Carolina is from Venezuela, and she's come to Britain to live, study, and have fun. She's at Newcastle University in the northeast of England, studying environmental science. Last time we listened, Carolina had just arrived and met her new flatmates at the university. Let's see where she is this time. It's so exciting, and it starts on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you, Emily. That would have been really difficult without you. No problem. Are you coming to the Society's Bazaar? The what? Oh, sorry. The Society's Bazaar. The meeting for all the different student clubs at the university. Oh, yes, I know. I read about it. It's a bit different from universities at home, but I think I understand. <laughs> all the different clubs come to this... Bizarre, is that right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all the first-year students join the clubs they want to. But remember that the first-year students are called freshers. All of this is important, Carolina. <laughs> freshers, that's right, because we're fresh, I suppose. <laughs> Can you join as many clubs as you like? Yeah, as many as you want. Ooh. But you have to pay, remember. Mm. It's in there, uh, over there. Oh, It looks quite crowded. Mm. Shall we go in? Mm. Let's see. Oh, I don't know, really. It's a bit too crowded for me. Yes. Listen, I'm going to go and join the queue for the basketball club. Do you want to meet back here in about 20 minutes? Okay. I want to join the International Student Society, but the queue is too big. Mm. I'm going to have a look around and wait for the queue to get smaller. <laughs> okay. I'll see you back here, yeah? Mm. In about 20 minutes? Okay. See you later. Conservation Society, just five pounds membership. Come and join us. Um, hi. Um, I'm not quite sure what the Conservation Society is. Uh, can you tell me a bit about it? Definitely. We go out into the countryside and we do things to help the environment. Oh. Uh, sort of countryside management, you know. Um, <laughs> looking after forests, um, making the countryside better for animals and birds and things. Right. Um, <laughs> it's quite hard to explain, really. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, here comes the society president. Oh. I'm sure he can tell you about it better than me. Oh, Jamie, hi. <laughs> we met on the train, remember? Carolina, mm. hi, how are you? Did you find your room okay and everything? Yes, thank you. And you're the president of the Conservation Society? Your friend was telling me about it. <laughs> yes. Are you going to join? Mm. Remember, I was telling you about the countryside in Northumbria, north of Newcastle. Mm. It's really beautiful. You should join and come and see it with us. I'm sure it's a bit different from Venezuela. <laughs> OK, you've persuaded me. <laughs> what do I have to do to join? Excellent. You just have to fill in this form. Ah. I'll fill it in for you. Carolina. Mm -hmm. What's your surname? Del Barco. Uh. Do you want me to spell it? Yeah, please. Is it one word or two words? Two words. D-E-L, small d, mm -hmm. then capital B-A-R-C-O. And have you got your email address yet? My university email? No, not yet. But you can use another address. It's caro, 
Del B eighty eight at readynet dot vz. Uh, can you spell that for me? Okay, it's Carol Del B C A R O D E L B. All one word. Uh huh. Eighty eight at readynet. R e a d y n e t dot v z net dot v z. Okay, great. And have you got a mobile number yet? Yes. Oh, just a moment. I'll have to look at my phone. I haven't learnt it yet. Here it is. O double three four. Seven four six one o three seven o double three o double three four seven four six one o three seven four seven four six one o three seven. Right, thanks. What department are you in, Carolina? I can send you our booklet. I haven't finished writing it yet. Environmental science in the Deish building. Ah, uh, can't you send it there? Yeah, no problem. The booklet's got all the information in it. Uh, we usually meet on Sundays and talk about what we're going to do and things. Mm -hmm. We're all going out to the pub this Thursday. If you want to come,、mm -hmm. I'll give you a ring and let you know where we're going. If that's okay. Yeah, great. Right, that's everything. Actually, there's one more thing.、Mm -hmm. I seem to remember that you said you'd take me to lunch. <laughs> Do you want to go and get a sandwich somewhere? <laughs> yes, I did, didn't I? Okay.、Um, I just need to talk to my friend. Oh, were you in any societies at university, Tess? Loads. Well, I joined lots of societies in my first year, but I didn't really do a lot. I was in a cycling society, and I used to play volleyball. Oh. Anyway, what about Jamie and Carolina going out for lunch, eh? What about it? <sighs> oh, I see what you mean.、Mm. <laughs> well, that's almost everything for today. But a podcast wouldn't be a podcast without a joke from Gordon. Are you ready, Gordon? <laughs> I am, Ravi. Another special one for you today.、Ooh. I'm sure it is, Gordon. All your jokes are special, in their own way. <laughs> Let's hear it. Anyway, a rabbit walks into a butcher's shop and says, "Have you got any carrots?" <laughs> and the butcher says, "No, this is a butcher's shop. We don't sell carrots." And the rabbit says, "Okay," and goes out of the shop. <laughs> An hour later, the rabbit comes back. Have you got any carrots? And the butcher says, "No, I told you this is a butcher's shop. We haven't got any carrots." An hour later, it happens again, and an hour after that, it happens again. <laughs> well, the butcher's getting really annoyed. Next time the rabbit comes in, "Have you got any carrots?" The butcher says, "Look." I've told you we don't have any carrots here. If you come back to this shop one more time, I'm going to take a hammer, take some nails, and I'm going to nail your ears to the floor. Okay? So the rabbit goes away. But guess what? An hour later, the rabbit comes back and walks into the shop. Have you got any nails? No, says the butcher. Hmm. Have you got any carrots? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Gordon, I think that's the best one so far. <laughs> You're getting better.、Yeah. Right, we have to go now, but don't go away. After this little break, you're going to hear Tom, our English teacher. After every show, Tom talks about the language you heard and gives you ideas to help you learn. So don't go away, but I'll say goodbye now. See you next time. Bye. Don't forget to send us your emails. Here's that address one more time. It's learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil dot org.
You are listening to a Learn English Elementary recording from the British Council. Hi, my name's Tom. At the end of every podcast, I talk about some of the language that you heard and some ways to help you learn English. The first thing I want to talk about today is the word like. Like can be used in lots of different ways in English. Listen to Tess talking to Jody at the beginning of the quiz. Listen for the word like. Let's start with you, Jody. Where are you calling from? From Cardiff, in Wales. Do you like it? Yeah, it's great. It's a capital city, you know, so there's quite a lot to do. This is the use of like that I'm sure you already know. It's being used as a verb. Tess asks Jody if she enjoys living in Cardiff. Now listen to Tess again, talking to Will this time. Listen for the word like. Is it a verb here? Now, Will, where are you? In Peterborough. Ah,、oh, okay. I know where that is. And what's it like? Um, it's a bit boring, really. Tess asks Will, "What's it like?" She's asking him to describe Peterborough. Will could say, "It's very big," or "It's very quiet," or "It's got a lot of shops." In the question, "What's it like?" "Like" is a preposition, not a verb. The meaning isn't connected to the meaning of "like" as a verb. It's a very common question in English. When we want someone to describe something to us, we often use. What's it like? A good example is, "What's the weather like in London?" We want the person to tell us if it's raining or sunny, if the weather's good or bad, or "What's your teacher like?" We want you to describe your teacher. Maybe she's young, or she's blonde with blue eyes, or she's very friendly, or even she's terrible. Any answer that describes her in some way. Now listen to Tess and Jody again. Listen to how Jody uses like. Yes, well done, Jody, and bad luck, Will. Jody wins this week's Learn English book token to buy any book you want. What kind of book are you going to buy, Jody? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think. Probably like a novel or something. Hmm. Jody's going to buy. Probably like a novel or something. She isn't using like as a verb or a preposition here. She's using it as a filler. A filler is something that we say to give us more time to think. For example, um or er、uh, or I don't know. You will hear young native English speakers use like a lot in this way. You'll hear, for example, yeah, it's like really cool. Remember that this is a very informal way to speak. If you want to use like in this way, then only do it with groups of young friends and not in more formal situations with your teacher, for example. Next time you watch a teenage film in English, listen for like used in this way. I'm sure you'll notice it a lot. It can be difficult to know which words and phrases are informal in English. You may hear a new phrase in a film or a song and want to use it, but can you be sure that you'll use it in the right situations with the right people? A good learner's dictionary can help you with this. It will tell you when a word is informal. Most dictionaries use the letters I N F M L next to the word. This means informal. So then you can make a note in your vocabulary notebook so that you won't forget. Let me give you an example. The word "children" isn't formal or informal. You can use "children" in any situation with your friends, or even if you are talking to the Queen. It's never wrong. It's what we call a neutral word. But the word "kids," which can mean exactly the same as "children," is a lot more informal. It would sound strange to talk about kids at a formal party, for example. Check the word "kids" in your dictionary now, and see if it tells you that it's an informal word. Now let's talk about something different. When someone tells you their phone number or address, it can be difficult to remember it and write it down at the same time. It can be difficult for native speakers, 
but maybe more difficult if English isn't your first language. Of course, you can say, "I'm sorry, could you say that again?" or "Could you repeat that, please?" But listen to what Jamie does when Carolina tells him her phone number. Here it is. O double three four seven four six one o three seven. O double three. O double three. Mhm. Four seven four six one o three seven. Four seven four six one o three seven. Right. Thanks. Jamie can only remember the first three numbers, so he repeats them o double three, and then he pauses. He stops and waits. This shows Carolina that he wants her to repeat the rest of the numbers for him. He doesn't need to ask. We do this a lot in English. Maybe you do it in your language too, or maybe not. We do it with telephone numbers, addresses, and even names if someone is spelling them out for us. If your English teacher says the homework is workbook page sixty-five exercises one, three, and seven, and you can't remember and write it down at the same time, you can say workbook page sixty-five and stop. Your teacher will then repeat exercises one, three, and seven. Here's another thing that I noticed in this podcast: listen to Will and Jody introducing themselves at the beginning of the quiz. They're both sixteen years old, so listen to what Will says. I'm still at school. I'm sixteen, so I'm doing my GCSE exams this year. I'm sixteen as well. Yes, he says I'm sixteen as well. As well means the same as two in this phrase. You can say I'm sixteen too, or you can say I'm sixteen as well. But be careful. You can say "me too," but we don't say "me as well." If your friend says, "I'm going to Anna's party tomorrow," you can say "me too," or you can say "I'm going too," or you can say "I'm going as well." Try to use "as well" when you're speaking English this week. Okay, that's all from me today. I'll talk to you all again on the next podcast. Remember, you can send your questions to me at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil dot org. I'll be happy to answer your questions. In a moment, you'll hear the address for the website where you can read everything you've heard in this podcast. So, bye for now. See you next time. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts. Visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org/learnenglish.